Yeah. Rapid Africa. TM. All day, all day. Hello, hello, hello. This is Africans <laughs> Leaving America. I am Afia Kumsen. We have a wonderful guest today. Can you please introduce yourself, sis? I'm Cicely uh, McClennan, your boy, and I am here in uh, the eastern region of Accra. I mean, not of a crowd, the eastern region of Ghana. Okay, okay. I don't now, live here. I'm, I'm visiting. You visiting? Okay. So, uh, which area do you uh, normally like uh, reside in? In the Pokuasi. Pokuasi. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's it. That's kind of and it's in a Accra area. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, when was the first time you knew that you wanted to travel to Africa? Oh, long time. I don't know, I could have been, I don't know, around, I don't know, I was young, you know, maybe a teenager, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, it had to be around, um, I remember I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, I was about 14, Wonderful. so book. it had to be sometime soon after that. And when you told your family that you wanted to go to Africa, how did they respond? Uh, it was about half and half negative, half positive. <laughs> and it, I, I'm laughing about it now, but it, it took me a long time to, to overcome the negative and to focus on the positive and to just uh, make my move. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it like me, it took me a long time to do it. At the end of the day, it's our decision, you know, and we know what we want, you know? Yeah, and, and we know the, the illness and the challenges that we face as a people. And sometimes those illnesses, that mental illness that's been really opposed on us by this oppressive uh, system, it impacts our decisions. And they're not always thinking about what the best thing is for us and our family. So you know, knowing that I had to come into that understanding. And the other part to that is that <clears throat> I didn't know that everybody who comes over to Africa goes through that. I thought it was just yeah. my family. It's just like, oh my God, these are the most unreasonable people and blah, blah, blah. No, it's, it's just part of our struggle uh, to overcome what they're trying to make us focus on and think about as opposed to what will be positive and fruitful for us to think about. So it took me a long time to get over that. Um, I thank God that I have a family that is for Africa. You know, I'm the only one that has been besides my little sister. Um, but my mother, she's on board. You know, she's on board to come. So next time we go back, uh, she's probably going to be on the plane with us, most definitely. Oh, that's a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Girl, yeah. look, look, girl, my granny want to come too. Look, grandma <laughs> talking about she wants to come to Africa too. So I'm I so it. thankful for that, you know, because, because, you know, the elders are the ones that's kind of on the fence about it. You know, usually I the younger it. generation is for it, but the elders, honey, it's like pulling teeth trying to get them to go back to Africa. <laughs> for me, it's been a combo of both. And then, um, over the years, I've, I've learned not to count my people out because just when you think they can't get past, you know, the foolishness, they they be calling you, telling about I'm on my way. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I had to really, ultimately, I had to really just learn that my job was to do me and, and to let the chips fall where they was going to fall. And when I saw what happened after that, I was very pleased that my family and how they've been coming to um, visit, they planning visits, they backing us up, you know, making sure we are supported in everything that we do. And I, I had to actually, I publicly made a video about it. You know, it's, it's on my YouTube channel or Facebook page somewhere mm -hmm. where I was like, man, let me correct myself and don't never underestimate my people because right. just when you think they don't or they won't or they can't, 
they they have surprised me on so many occasions and just really humbled me and let me know, you know, as, as my daughter told me one time, you know, it doesn't matter what people do as much as it matters that you do what you know you supposed to do. Exactly. What they do really ain't your business it's in the not. first place. So, you know, and the more I let that go and concentrate on what I needed to do for me and my children, you know, the more positive effect and the more positive feedback that I've started to get. Let that, I hope that's encouraging to somebody. Don't think because people are saying all this negative stuff now that that's going to mean anything in the full scheme of things. Those very people that look sideways at you will surprise you. And, you know, like I was in, in the States taking care of some family business and I came back here to meet a cousin that I had never met before in the States and she was over here. Wow. You know, so I just want to be clear that, you know, focus on what you know you're supposed to do and do that. And, and people and will follow. People will follow. Up. Because, so, I mean, you got your boots in the soil, so you are there. You know what I mean? So once they see that you getting yours together, they coming. You know? They are absolutely. coming. Absolutely. So I want to know, how has your life changed since your repatriation to Ghana? Uh, in a lot of ways. Um, for, you know, the obvious you know, debilitating anxiety um, and um, the the uh, mad rush, you know, that I was involved in uh, in the U.S. is calmed down a lot. I would say that I've found a little bit more patience. Um, I think my blood pressure is much more stable here. I don't think I know. Um, than it is in the U.S. Like I said, I was just there recently and it did a number on me. I know. Physically, physically. I know it. And I'm, I'm really just trying to recover from just being there, uh, <laughs> frankly. It's so uh, stressful, so, isn't it? I know it. Yeah, it, it really was. Not just mentally, but physically um, stressful because the environment there is, is multi-layered toxicity. It you know? is. Um, and you just you do get a more of a reprieve from some of that when when you're when you over here you get mm -hmm. a reprieve from some of that, um, and it and it and it helps you know my children are all just in better moods, you know they smile they laugh as opposed to just always being nervous, um, and and whiny and clingy you know, uh, so. It's, a, it's been a lot of positive effects for, for our family. So that's one thing. Uh, what else? Uh, I think it, you know, once you leave out of your comfort zone, it, it shows you what, not just what you are made of, but what, what your whole community is made of, you know? And I have learned a lot about not just myself, but like I said, the people around me. And I'm happy to say I was wrong <laughs> on, you know, underestimating and just being overly pessimistic um, and cynical, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've let go a lot of that and I feel good about that part right there. Uh, I really do. So um, if anything, I like to encourage people, you know, man, just let, let, let that go, let it go and see as, as the elders say, see what the ancestors have, you know, have in store for you. So those and are I, the major, the major differences. And I tell you what, you know, you're really making your ancestors proud because they never were able to come back home, but they coming back home through you, they living there through you, you know, so you are really doing a lot of us due diligence being there because we get an inspiration from you all. The ones that are there, we are getting inspiration from you all and we are coming, you know, we, we yeah. are coming. We are. Every single day. I'm, I'm, more, I really, you know, we have a lot of challenges as African people throughout the world. But one thing that I would like to say that is kind of moving in a direction 
we want to see is that just what you're saying, people are, even if they don't come, they're feeling the connection. Exactly. You know, the connection was never broken. It was challenged, but it was never broken. Important for us to, to um, feel the vibe of our ancestors and what our calling is, regardless of where we are. And just the fact that we're able to do this, what we're doing right now is absolutely, it is, it's amazing. It feels amazing. I feel like I'm representing a whole bunch of people just by you are. on this You, you are. Know, uh, the, the, the feedback that I got from my children when we, when we were on our way here, you know, one of them was like, oh, we're going to miss this and all that. And I was like, oh, you don't worry. <laughs> you know, when your grandchildren put a picture up on the wall, it's going to be my picture. Because, you know, I and I feel very proud of that because I have decided and based on, you know, the elders in my family and my community that, yeah, it, it's time for us to be established on the land of our ancestors. It's time for us to go back home and do our thing. So for that, yeah, I, I feel very happy about that. I feel very proud of myself uh, about that. And I feel encouraged and motivated, you know, by that, by that energy um, and, and that spirit. It's, mm -hmm. it's very, very powerful. And you hear a lot of people saying that, like, why did you come to Africa? And people will just tell you, I was called. Like I yeah. just really show up. It, it kind of was like a pull and a push and a call that you just one day said, okay, let me start getting my stuff together because I can see what direction I need to be moving in. So exactly. I, I, you know, I feel I can't, I don't get a chance to talk about it that much, but I feel very, very good about that. Yeah, this, this is one of the, you know, one of my friends called me one day. She said, if you don't do nothing else, <laughs> you know, you put your foot on the land and help establish your family at home. You know, uh, of course, I got a lot more things I'm doing and want to do. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge accomplishment for me. And I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be able to do it. I'm honored to be able to do it. And I feel lucky, too, you know, just like this is a like you one of the chosen ones. You yes, know, yes, you are yes, you are it. one of the chosen, you know, yes. you took the leap of faith and now you are there. You are living the life of an African woman, you know, and yeah. you are also a, an author, you know, so you write books. Now, can you tell the platform a little bit about that? I just started writing books. I write, um, you know, just various miscellaneous articles and stuff like that over the years. Um, but I had decided to write about my repatriation journey. Um, and right now it's just out there in ebook e format. I can share the links with you guys. Um, in, in the first one, what I did was I started a resource list, which I listed your uh, Facebook group resource in that book. Um, and I, I felt like that was something that was important. Let me go on the record and say, I didn't just get here by osmosis. It yeah. was a whole bunch of people uh, that supported me along the way. And if you need some help or encouragement, maybe you can link up with them too. So I listed the people and the organizations that I think is uh, supportive of people during that process. And then the second one was just stuff, you know, it was like, you know, sometimes we, we get into these um talks and discussions and the things that we need to talk about sometimes we don't talk about it. detail the second one is um like the hidden costs what are the things that are going to hit you in your pockets that you don't think about when you're right. making this move so you know i'm like let me just go ahead and get this off my chest because i have been through the struggle and the purpose of me doing that is so hopefully it makes it a little bit smoother for, for somebody else. So, and then I'm working on the third piece, which is, um, it's going to be more personal, uh, just about my, my path and it, it's been a path. Okay. Um, so I want to, I want to just get into that a little bit. And 
since I have this uh, new African Image Makers Media Collective that um, we started back in like 2005, um, we're working our way into publishing. So I'm, I'm gonna be publishing um, my books as well as a few other people, you know, over the next year or so. Um, it's very important for me uh, professionally, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, and it's not easy to live and then to also document your experience and then to also share that experience. Exactly. And to make sure that you can keep doing that on a consistent basis. But that's what New African Image Makers is about. And um, so we just want to be supportive to people, especially the elders who do have a story to tell um, and wisdom that they do want to share with us, that they have a supportive publisher that's African-centered, um, that's all about us creating and controlling the narrative about our story, our stuff, and where we, where we visualize our future going as African people. That's a, that's a huge thing for me. Um, we're also forming a, a partnership with the African Science and Research Institute, ASRI, and that is to get into a little bit more uh, academic, scientific writing, um, which I don't normally do, but I'm capable. Um, so, you know, look forward to hearing from, from that collaboration. Um, but yeah, the writing piece is, 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 um, is crucial to my therapy. It's crucial that for me that when all these talks about scamming and um, this lack of integrity that the accusations that are floating around all of us as African people, and we are um, more or less promoting that, <laughs> you know, ourselves. I'm like, well, whatever I said, I put it in writing. And I stand on it. If I say I, I'm messing with these people over here and they did me good, then share that information with you. Believe me, I know where they live at if, <laughs> if stuff goes south. So right. I, I'm standing on that. I never want to be that type of person. You are the kind of people that, you know, they brag about their great job and they ain't never able to help nobody else. And I didn't want to be that person, you know, I don't come on, on social media to brag about what I'm doing. I come on there to, to bring information and to share and hopefully encourage somebody else. So I wanted to make sure that I said, yes, I did see this person, talk to this person, or I did this business with this person. And it went very well. In fact, let me share their contact with you. And that way it cannot be said that all we're doing is scamming. Well, it was said by one or two or three people. You've heard it. But I want it to be on the record. On the record. And saying, yes. And saying that, yeah, this is what's happening here. Um, and there's some real good people over here. You know, not all. That's not the point. But don't let it be said that we as people, as a people, don't have integrity. Um, so the writing is just part of me um, pushing back against that scam narrative um, and just sharing the information, you know. And and your book, uh, your ebook, is called Beckon, right? Yeah, the first one is called Beckon, the ancestral call. Okay. Um, and the second one is called the hidden cost of repatriation. Okay, and that mm -hmm. comes with the question that I was getting ready to ask. Um, what have you learned about Ghana that will help repats transition more smoothly? Um, the main thing is, you know, since the Empress said this before, and she was like, you have to repatriate in your mind before you repatriate with your body. And so as much as you can do that, I highly recommend that. And that's what I did in Beckham, you know, is, you know, people always are, well, what? I want to come to Africa. What's the first thing I do? And I'm like, the first thing that you need to do is get in touch with the Africans around you, wherever you are and feel the vibe, you know, see, try all the different African foods, um, you know, just start getting in the mix with people who are from where you want to go or who are from where you might want to go, make some friends 
who are Pan-African minded, um, you know, just start, you know, getting out there, meeting people and see which way, you know, the ancestors would, would direct you from that point. So, you know, a lot of people are like research, 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 but some of the research comes from here. Yep. It comes from here and it comes from here. Okay. So, and we're quick to underrate the research that we have to do inside ourselves. Quick to we try underrate. to write that off, don't we? <laughs> right. Or oh, just emotional or this thing. And that's all to me, that's foolishness, you know, because it all goes together. It and does. It's more than one way to research and we should do all of it. And we shouldn't deny our instincts because they're there. Like I said, that connection is there. It's just waiting for you to realize it. So as you come in contact with different African communities around you, but that dance is natural to me, you know? So it's not something that I was taught uh, purposely, something that I've, it's resonated with me and that's, that's my moves, you know what I mean? So, you know, <laughs> as, you know as they say, bad bird. But so um, I recommend that um, people just get, you know, just get in the mix, man, and, and start experiencing the aspects of our culture um, uh, consciously, wherever you are. And and then you will know what to do after that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't know what it was about Ghana with me, but before I even met my husband, Ghana had resonated with me. It did. Right. And when right. I got there, I was like, I'm home. You know, this yeah. is home, you know. And um, my sister, she's been in Nigeria twice and she loves it. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like Nigeria is her home. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you resonate with different countries. You know what I mean? With your personality, and you know. cultures. Yeah. I, I was talking to a Nigerian brother online today and I told him technically any of us coming for almost any of us coming from the states would probably feel at home in Nigeria. You know, it's just most of us haven't been, but given the 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 hugeness of that country um and the the power of the nations that make up, you know, that section, not just Nigeria but the whole of West Africa. Yes. I just can't imagine any section of this space that wouldn't wouldn't vibe with me, you know. Now, there are some people who really uh, vibe with the East African side. And yeah. I love yeah. to take a guess about it. And then afterwards, maybe people do their DNA and be like, oh, I knew it. I knew mm -hmm. it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, you don't have to use DNA. You can use this and this yes and, and yes. your own experience your own eyes and your own feeling and see where you fit in and you could take your research from that point most definitely most definitely because yeah. i interviewed a girl she went to ghana first and then she ended up going to tanzania and she's made that her home you know what i mean mm -hmm. so yeah i yeah. mean it's just about yeah. all re resonating and she said every day they think that she's a tanzanian you know, yeah. like they speak to her in Swahili and, you know, and yeah. everything. So it's like, you know, yeah, it's like yeah. you're one of the sisters. Yeah, I love well, that. Yeah. So look. Yeah. And, I, and I really encourage us to just come. Just come. Don't even start. You don't have to figure everything out. You, you know don't. what I mean? Some of it is sometimes it'll be like you in a crowd of people and somebody start calling you. But they recognize you. What about that part? You know? Like, I know you, you, you like my sister. You like my sister. Yep. And they got to take you to their house. Then you see their sister. Then you be like, oh, oh I am like this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so a lot of it is just get on the grounds. If you can uh, get on the grounds. <laughs> and have you noticed that since you've been there, you've seen people that look like people in the States, you know? Oh, every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> All the, look, you know what? The funniest thing about that piece is people will be swearing that I'm not African. I'm not this. I'm not that. Okay. But I just saw your twin over in the crowd. Yep. You know what I'm saying? A few of them, I seen more than one twin. So I'm like, boy, I got you pegged. You is right up in here. Yep. I don't yep. care what you say. 
So I don't even listen to that no more. People just be talking sometimes, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. They just repeating what they've been told. We all know we've been repeatedly told that we should be apart from Africa, anything African, and that's not for us. We've been repeatedly, that's been beat into us. It but has. at some point, your inner voice has got to override that training and give yourself a chance to see yourself looking right back at you because it's, it's definitely, I would say, probably about 70% of the people I know got a twin in West Africa. I'm telling you, I've yeah. seen so many people in Africa that I was like, man, I know your cousin in the States. I know your uncle mm-hmm. in the States. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's it was mm-hmm. just that serious. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is so dope. Yeah. Yep. So, so what about the children? Do they like the school system? Yeah, they got they, they list of complaints, you know, but I think it's clear that their discipline has improved. Um, I think it's clear that they're uh, more driven as students. Uh, one of them was already academically aggressive, but the other one, but they're both even more than they were um, at first. And so for me, you know, I don't care what they say. I like that part. They, I sent them to a, a school where they do use corporal punishment. They will get the cane on their uh, on their backside. Um, but personally, I'm not super opposed to that. You know, I do monitor it, but mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not uh, 100% opposed to it. And I do think some of that is from dealing with Europeans too. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm here. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the, the moves that they, that's the moves that they use. And um, I just try to encourage my, my boys to do what they're supposed to do when mm-hmm. they're supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so that's how we managed with that. Um, they say that it's not, they don't feel that it's academically uh, challenging for them, but I think that's all in a method that they're using to teach because they are as sharp as a tax as they ever were. And the stuff that they're learning, they know it. You understand. They can talk about it. It comes up in different conversations. And then their school is teaching them about uh, traditional culture. Of course, it teaches them about Christianity and Islam, too. And they're learning all of it. And they are learning it. You know what I mean? Um, They're also learning how to write, which is something that is completely de-emphasized. And not just the physical printing of the letters, but writing yeah <laughs> through writing so um that's great I'm, I'm, i you know i just videotaped them doing uh they use physical movement kinetic energy and uh muscle memory to teach math to my wow. team and i just i can't hold a candle to him as far as math that's um, amazing and he's 10 so and I've seen them doing it with uh younger students too and in the language piece that's another one they're learning so many languages from school formally and also just from the community and they're learning them and they're learning how to communicate in these different languages and I've also seen three-year-olds learning different languages too wow writing uh and just amazing so and this is the everyday regular schools we're not even going to a really great private school like my friends have over here uh a bb for uh with the cambones you know they 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 have amazing you know school we just go to a regular school and Mm -hmm. i'm already you know i'm very impressed so and then um so yeah, that's that's the long and the short on that part. And then what else? Like the social piece, it's okay uh, for the younger, uh, the young kids. But my twenty-two year old just got here a few months ago. Okay, and, uh, that is more challenging. That age is. Is more that your daughter? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. with that. Man, it's your feet. I, you know, I need to get a a, a a medal just for getting her over here, first of all. Yeah. And second of all, uh, just, it's, it's going pretty good. It's very challenging, though. That age is, is uh, you know, and it, it's not just because of the age. It's because of the conditioning that, that she's endured in, yes. in America. Yes. Um, and I don't think I need to go into the details of that with your audience because we all know about it if we have any young adults around us. You know what they going through. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like it's more targeted towards them in the United States than anybody, you know, because yeah. us people that are older, you know, we have our own little thing that we, you know, um, reside with. But the younger generation, they are being more um, corrupted through the and music. They're, yes, they're yes, 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 through the yeah. uh, media and everything. So... That's why I said congratulations to getting her uh, back home because I'm sure that's that was one of the hardest things to do was to get her back. And okay, I got I, I got one more question for you. Um, does you and your family feel safe in Ghana? Yeah, we feel safe. Um, it's it's levels, you know what I mean? Um, because we from Chicago, so. <laughs> Hey, you already know. You already know. <laughs> yeah, so you already no know. You know, I'm from Illinois too. You know, so yeah. yeah. There's no comparison in that regard. Now, do things go down here? Yes, of course they do. But frankly, I'm used to all of them and more. So and it more. Doesn't, it doesn't phase me like that. And I do notice a lot of people saying that they feel safer. They don't feel safe here or um that you know, um, you know, where they felt so safer in other parts of Africa. And I, I would like to just point out that, you know, they do studies on this. And this is like one of the top safest places in all of Africa. Exactly. So, but the people here are very cautious too. Um, they're very, um, you know, aware of environment and they're, you know, they like to be prepared. So visitors, they'll be telling you, be careful of this, be careful of that, be careful. Be careful, but realize that probably none of that stuff is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? In most cases. Um, there's a road issue here, though. Uh, traffic issue. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's, that's probably the most unsafe aspect of it. And uh, frankly, it still is not more unsafe than what we're used to is just so unnecessary here. Um, and it will be a few things that needed to happen in order to really improve that um, deaths on the road here. It, a few things they could do to really, really um, make it more safe than it already is. So, um, but the road safety is definitely a concern um, because there's really no order when it comes to the road safety in uh in Ghana. I know there's people just drive how they want to drive, make their it's own. Order, yeah. But yeah. it's an order that we're not used to. And a lot of times it would be if if they would just follow the rules, it would mm -hmm. be order. Um, if the rules were enforced, exactly. Um, and people exactly. were held accountable for following those rules. So is you know you know black people we drive like black people all over we the world do. okay we have a, a way of driving because we have rhythm and we have like a quick time thing going on right brain and the coordination is there and we also communicate with each other um without the usual senses while yes. we drive okay so that's normal for us but what's not normal is the whole lack of accountability um, and this is, we laugh and joke about it, but I, I'm, I'm visiting some friends right now who are recovering from a very bad accident. That's what I was going to so, ask you about too. Yeah, are they so, okay? Are they recovering? All by right. The, by the grace, you know, they are, they are recovering, you know, still just, you know, you know how accidents are, you know, you don't really feel the pain till about two weeks later. Yes. So <laughs> they, they still still you know going through that and getting over that so um but we just happy they 
They, uh, they okay. Get over it. Um, well, I'm very thankful for your interview. I've been wanting to get up with you for a while, but they've been coming <laughs> for me, sis. <laughs> but me too. You know, I've had the most inappropriate requests from people. And I'm like, why do y'all, why y'all try to do me like this? You know, come and do an interview with me. I'm like, fine. Um, but you know, can what you gonna do for me? You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Like, you mm-hmm. gonna promote my book, you gonna do something for me. And uh, you'll be surprised that some of the travel group don't even want to do that. And I'm like, why would you call me and ask me, you know, to come and share my knowledge with your whole group? And then you don't want to reciprocate nothing. That's not cool. That's not cool at all. So I don't mind doing it. I love to talk about my experience because you're the only one who's going to ask me about it. I, otherwise, I don't have <laughs> no time or chance to 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 really reflect on anything, had send me the questions, you know. So this is my chance to really, you know, get into my science, my inner science. And uh I appreciate the opportunity to do it. And uh I appreciate your group being, you know, you moderate it and you know keep everything informative and um focused on on Africa. Yes. And, ooh, some of the other groups. I've I've left so many groups and been censored and a couple of them. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm going to tell you one thing. I want to thank you for even putting our group inside of your book. You know, Africans leaving America is for African descent only. You know, so it's for us. That's it. I'm not letting no other uh, ethnicity inside the group because we need to heal as a whole and we need to get to know each other as well. You know what I mean? So that's why the group was created so we all can come together and unite. Because that's what right. needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And um, that's exactly why I appreciated the space. And um, I made sure that I, I, like I said, went on the record and said that, yeah, this is a space that you can go into and, you know, talk about your concerns, bring out your questions, you know, and get some good feedback. So those spaces are absolutely necessary and people are using them. And they are moving, child, yes. every day. Every day you get those alerts. I'm in Ghana, I'm in Ghana, I'm in Ghana. And yeah, we love those. <laughs> Especially the group African Americans in Ghana. Hey, people are coming back like the Exodus. They are. Yeah. They coming yeah. back. Well, yeah. thank you so much, sis. You have a wonderful thank evening. Thank you. I appreciate you. No problem. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 yeah. Rapid Africa TN All day, all day God. Eat a